Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to break down this painting into easy to follow steps, way easier than you might imagine, so that you can follow along and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I, I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps that are easy to follow so that not only you learn how to do the painting techniques, but also you learn about the app. And the app I'm using is Procreate, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along and achieve success. But within the app itself, Procreate, I've opened their A4 default canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. In terms of the color profile, I'm going to use one of the default color profiles, which is the sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1, it's here on the list. I'm only going to be using the brushes that come free within the app, and as such, within airbrushing, I'll probably be using the soft brush, the medium hard brush. Within calligraphy, I'm going to use the mono line. Within the vintage set, I'm going to use the rad brush. Within the luminance, I'm going to use the light pen, as well as the nebula brush. And that will probably do it in terms of the brushes. In terms of the colors, well, I've pre-selected a color palette and each of these colors has linked to it a hexadecimal code, which is if you go to the value section here under hexadecimal, you can type the codes in one at a time, press enter and the color appears up here and then you can tap it to create your own palette. Each of these codes is down in the video description. You just need to take a note of them. Or next to them is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file there for free. And it's also the place where you can gain access to exclusive content, extended tutorials, and obviously support this channel. And with all of that said and done, we're going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the first color, which is just black. I'm going to go to my brushes, calligraphy, monoline. I'm going to put it at the lowest size and 100% opacity. And I'm just going to draw, not really caring too much, just an irregular kind of egg shape. And I don't want to press and hold to make it a perfect egg. I want some of those shapes and irregularities to kind of remain. Then going to go to the selection tool, put it on automatic, tap inside that shape, go to my layers and create a new layer. However, I'm going to move that layer by pressing and holding and dragging it underneath. So now layer two is underneath layer one. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to choose the third color on the top row and I'm going to drag into that area to flood fill that shape. Okay, we're going to deselect, then we're gonna to go to layer one, we're gonna go back to the selection tool, and we're gonna select the background, then we're going to select the invert, and it selected the inside of the shape plus the black outline, which is important. We're gonna to go to the brushes, monoline, still the same settings, 1% size and 100% opacity, and we're just gonna work our way around the edges doing straight lines. Now, you cannot add anything to the outside. It's only going to add lines to the inside of our shape now, which is just what we need. Now, I am going to hold until it snaps to a straight line at the end of each line that I draw. You need to be extra careful when you're selecting this. Make sure that the line you've drawn actually goes from the line and meets it. Therefore, we've created a complete sealed area in that shape. And again, we can draw more shapes. Hold it until it snaps to a straight line. If you find there are any areas perhaps where you know you've slightly neglected to close it in later on you can always just seal it it's not really a big deal but i would recommend you do your best to try and just monitor that as you go along get some more lines hold until it snaps close get some more shapes that cut across perhaps you don't need to go all the way perhaps you could go that far have another line that cuts across however you want to construct these you know there's no right or wrong you just need to remember to hold until it snaps. Once you're happy with your selection of shapes, triangles, different geometric forms, then we can move on. Now, I would just do a little bit of an inspection, just zoom in, look around any areas perhaps where they haven't quite closed the gap, just do a little bit of a double check of all of the little areas, because it will be important. Okay, deselect. I think I'm gonna go back to layer two, 
and I'm going to go to the adjustments, hue saturation and brightness. I'm just going to turn the brightness of that down to about 40%. Just gives you a slightly different feel for that background and it's going to be different than all the other greens that we've already got. I'm then going to go back to layer one. I'm going to go to the selection tool, automatic, and I'm just going to grab each of these different colors. And it's a good way of checking whether you have any of those little gaps between them as well, because if you select one shape and it merges with another now, then it's a good clue that you've left a gap. That's fine. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to go to my colors like the second green, for example, and I can start to just fill some of these areas with this really nice dark color. I don't care if some of the shapes are right next to each other as well. It doesn't matter. I just want to shut down some of the light in some of these areas. Get some nice dark areas. I'm also going to start moving along so we can go to the third color. And because that's now different in the background, it's not going to be a problem. So we can add this nice green in here as well. We can then go along to the fourth color. We can start adding that to a couple of areas. Think carefully about where it might have the best impact. Move along, maybe be more dramatic. Let's go to the fourth from the right. Let's pick an area we want a really strong reflection. Maybe I want it there as well, actually. Okay, and that will do initially. Deselect. I'm going to go to the layer two, create a new layer, but I'm going to put it underneath layer two. Back to my colors. I'm going to choose the end color on the middle row. I'm just going to drag it into the background to flood fill. And then I'm going to go with the soft brush, airbrushing, go back a color. So fifth from the left, second in from the right, brush size at 20%, 20% opacity. And I just really want to start creating an environment, just a hint of it to begin with. So I'm just going to add it to the bottom area, add it to the top area too. And a slightly darker band in the middle for now. Then I'm going to switch to maybe the black again. Zoom back out. I think I'm actually going to go to layer one and deselect that. We don't need that anymore. It did have the original black outlines, but we don't need it anymore. Then back to layer four, which is at the bottom with this soft brush, maybe reduce it down 5% size on the black and 2% opacity. And just near the bottom here, we're going to start building in some darkness really gradually. And we're going to have the shadow coming over here diagonally. Maybe they increase the size up to 10%. Certainly when it comes over here, I want it to be broader and bigger. I'd rather do it really subtly initially. Build it up gradually, like so. Don't mind if it comes over here as well. And over there, like this. Then I can swap to a nice vibrant green. So I'm going to go fourth. Turn the size of the brush down again to 5%. Stay at the 2%. And I can just start to bring some of this really nice green glow in here. Just setting the stage a little bit. I'm not going to go too far with this just yet. We're starting to get the essence of what we're aiming at. Then I'm going to go along to the third on the right, put it at 15% size, still at the 2% opacity. I'm just going to bring this a couple of times into that background area. Maybe go for something more saturated, maybe this from the left. Again, just add few bands of that. Nothing too profound. That will do initially. I'm also going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in maybe about 5%. Okay, so it's just starting to create a little bit of the environment, but not too specifically yet. I'm going to go back to the top layer and I'm going to create a layer above it. But we're going to go back to layer three again, use the selection tool, and one shape at a time we're going to select then go back up to layer five, go to my brushes. I'm going to use within vintage, the rad brush. I'm going to have the brush size at hundred percent and well, maybe about 30% opacity for this shape. It's quite a dark shape. So I'm going to go maybe for the third green on the top row and just tap a couple of times, just so we're creating some different effects within that shape. And you zoom in, you can see how it's created really almost like there's light bouncing around and creating some real refractions of light, which is perfect. Deselect. Go back to layer three, selection, choose another shape. I'm going to go for this one. 
go back to layer 5. This time I'm going to go with a darker colour. Same brush, same settings, and I can just start to play around with that shape as well. Deselect. Go for layer 3. Selection. Go for another shape. Go back up to layer 5. You just need to remember to keep swapping backwards and forwards. Same brush. Go for third colour. Map it a couple of times, maybe not too many for that one. Deselect. We can just keep building up this effect. Choose a light layer maybe. Back to layer 5. Choose a lighter colour, so maybe third in on the right. Tap it once, that probably is sufficient. Go back to layer 3. Selection. Choose another layer. Back to layer 5. In with my rad brush again. Choose another green. Fifth from the left in that shape a few times maybe, whatever you think seems to suit it. Back to layer three, selection, back to layer three, selection, and we're gonna start just playing around with some more of these shapes. So select that one, back to layer five, in with a mixture of colors. I'm gonna go for the second green, still the red brush, 30% opacity or so and 100% size and just playing around with that a little bit might want to alternate between the different greens. If you want to keep it subtle, you could turn it really low, 10%, and you're still effectively keeping it dark, but you've just made it more complex. Back to layer five, with the brush, fourth color this time. Just keep playing around. There's a couple of layers there. I think that I just want to push them even further. So we may as well do it on layer three itself. Let's go to the, the white, and I can just bring it into that shape. Let's create a real contrast. I think it will work better. Perhaps I could even then select one of those shapes, go in with maybe like a third color from the right, in with the rad brush, and I can just, maybe with a stronger opacity, slightly affect it. Now it's gonna be much more subtle because it's a light color on top of a very light color, but it does have an impact. It stops it being completely flat white. I think that actually benefits it. Back to layer three, selection. This one here, back to layer five. I'm gonna go in with maybe the fourth color, 100% size and lower on the opacity, maybe 20%, bring that in a little bit more subtly. Still want to ramp it up, but maybe not quite as much. Deselect. And we're starting to build in that effect. I think it's starting to work. If I want to create any more facets, I could easily do that. I could go back to layer three. I could turn on the alpha lock and with maybe something like the medium hard brush and a light color, maybe the third on the right, 1% size, I don't know, 50% opacity. I could just create a line here, snap so it holds, and then I can just color it in. I could easily create another one along that line, go over it a couple of times, fill it in even, reduce it down 1%, 2%, whatever works. Create some more little angles here. I'm going to go to layer three. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to go to the N and I'm going to play around with the different modes. So one of them that I think really works is multiply. Now just zoom out and you can compare it with or without. I think the darkening up of those layers actually really benefits it. Gives it an instant improvement in the way it looks. Okay, I'm going to go to the top and create a new layer, layer seven as it happens. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm going to go to my brushes, soft brush with an airbrushing, and I'm going to choose the last color, the white. I'm going to put the brush size really quite big at 30%, opacity at 5, and just where the white colors are, we're going to add a few taps of that. Then I'll put it up 60%, a couple more taps just to really build a glow into that area. And then I'm also going to reduce it back down. I'm going to put it down to about 5% and just focus in perhaps on the corner of this shape here and just really build in a nice glow just to really reflect back some of that light. 5% is a bit small, perhaps 10%, even 15, why not? And we can do it to both of those shapes a little bit, just really bring in the glow. Merge it down with the original layer through. So now we've just got all of that on one layer, which I think works better. I think I'm gonna go back to the original egg shape, tap on it, put on alpha lock, and then with the airbrushing soft brush with the black color. I'm going to go in at 15% size and 30% opacity. And I think we're just going to swipe it in a few times there at the bottom. Just gets rid 
of some of the separation of some of those forms. And I think that works a bit better. Back to layer three, selection. Let's just play around with a couple of the, all of these forms. Back to layer five. In with the vintage rad brush. Let's go for a nice vibrant color. Six, 100% size, 20% opacity. I'm just going for the ones that would otherwise be quite dark and just affecting them a little bit too. There's a shape there I'm still not happy with. So layer three, like that one. Back to layer five. Maybe going with a dark color, the second color. Same settings on the rad brush. Maybe just darken that up a little bit. Add some complexity to it. Deselect, and that's starting to improve it, I think. And you can just shift and nudge around the balance of some of these shapes and find something that works best for you. So I'm going to go back, layer three. There's a shape there. Quite like to change that one. Back to layer five so that I can do it. Choose a nice vibrant color, the fifth color. Same brush settings. Tap it in a few times. Deselect. I think that works. I think at this point, we can probably take layer five and merge it down with layer three. So now it becomes one layer. The alpha lock is still selected on this layer. I can go to the medium hard brush, go for the second color from the right, the top row, 2% size, 50% opacity, and we can just start adding some nice light colors here near the top as well. Now again, it's not gonna select between the shapes, so you're gonna find the nice gaps will remain. So that means we can just fine tune some of these forms and it will really work nicely. Now there's a couple of shapes that are neglected to actually select. It's not such a big deal. Had they really stood out, then I would have noticed it, but it's not really a big problem at this point. I'm just gonna add some of a highlight around the edge maybe. Perhaps that's a bit much. Maybe I'll turn the opacity down 25%. Find a way of just ramping it up in some areas. Again, just ramp it up in some areas a little bit. We can creep it round edges in places too. Maybe go for a different green, maybe go for a fourth green from the right. Again, we can just play around at the edges a little bit. Maybe go for the top, just bring that up a notch again. Quite like the effect that that has. Quite like to go for a different kind of hue. So I've got some colors here, slightly warmer colors. They're just for experimenting. You may not use those ones. I'm going to go for the first color on the middle row in with the vintage rad brush and I'm just going to experiment in areas so perhaps I'll turn this down a little bit 38% and also 20% opacity and I can just bring a hint of this influence into areas but not all over. I'm also not quite happy with the light so we can go back to layer 7 where it had the light on it and I can go to there and I can tap on the A and I can turn the strength of that impact down or up I think max is a bit too much. I'm gonna dial it back to, well, maybe about 70%. And it's still there, but it's not quite as disruptive as it was. I'm gonna go back to that layer and perhaps go in with the Luminance Light Pen. 100% size, 100% opacity, and with the white, we can just add a touch of it there, just be a bit more specific. And another one there. Go for the corners, perhaps just really bring them out a little bit more. Not too much. Perhaps we could even just go along the edge just to really sell that line along there. I think that adds a really nice effect. Maybe that corner, not too much here and here, just a hint of it. We could even just bring the size down to 50%. Just some tweaks along some other edges and corners. Not too much, I like it there perhaps, just a hint of it. Okay, back to layer three. Still got the alpha lock on, so I don't need to worry about being especially neat. I think that is starting to help quite a lot. Bring that in a bit more around that edge. And yeah, I'm starting to get even happier with that now. Perhaps we can go for second green on the middle row. Just bring in a touch of it where we want it, here and there, with this soft brush. In fact, let's change to the luminance nebula brush. We've not experimented with this yet. So 20% size, 20% opacity. Let's try all that. And we can just bring its influence in. <laughs> it's quite strong. We'll go for the third green on the top row. Yep, just bring a touch of it in where we feel it might benefit. So trial it, see where it works, where it adds something. If it doesn't, then that's fine. But if it does, that's great. I feel like there's an aspect here. I just want to be a little bit darker. 
So let's go use this selection. Let's see if it even still works. If you go into that area, yeah, it does pretty much like so. Then we can go to the adjustments, use saturation and brightness and turn that brightness down. Not losing anything, you're just making it darker. And again, selection, you can probably go to most of your areas still and tweak them. Let's go for that one there. Slide it, you'll select most of it. Adjustments, use saturation and brightness and you can tweak that more dark. Deselect, selection, maybe one there. Use saturation and brightness, maybe just tweak it a touch darker. Deselect, selection, one there. Use saturation much brighter, deselect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the out ones with the outlines, I'm just going to delete that layer so it's not in the way. That layer I'm going to merge down. It's all on one layer now, apart from the highlights. And with that layer, I'm just going to go to the eraser, put it on the medium hard brush with an airbrushing, put it down to 1% size, 100% opacity. In any way where it's just looking a bit too rounded, we can just shave off elements of it here and there just to create slight more angles and that can work better right here for example a bit too rounded we could just use it to refine some of these edges wherever we feel it would work better to be more angled it doesn't have to be overly dramatic just a little bit more start to create some sharper points here and there like at the top for example anywhere where it just looks a bit more glaringly rounded you can just angle it up a little bit more going to go to the background I'm going to go in with the luminance light pen I'm going to put it 100% size really low 10% opacity in with this green and I'm just going to start creating some just points around here just tapping a few times create some shimmers in this area so the lights pouring through and it's just creating a little bit of a glow in this area some shimmering light more condensed in some areas than others again it shouldn't take a great deal of effort Let's go to maybe a more vibrant green, the fourth. Let's really just start ramping it up. Let it build through some of this light. Try the fourth green. Maybe we could even go to some of these other colors. So we haven't really used the bottom row. Let's try the middle one of those. I've been reluctant to use too much of it, but maybe sparingly we can just add a slightly different hue in this mix. Back to the fourth green, back to the greens, I think. It's a bit more safety in that green but it's just shifted it a little bit and i think that adds another element i think i'm going to play around with the background a little bit more as well so we're still on the background layer we're going with the airbrushing soft brush we'll stay on this vibrant green 10 percent size 20 percent opacity let's have that going through in fact that's 20 percent is way too strong five percent let's run that through maybe even turn it down three percent Get some nice lines whizzing through there in the background. Third colour, maybe something on the ground here a little bit as well. Just keep it nice and loose. It doesn't need to be overly refined. Back to the luminance light pen with something like the fourth colour and 100% size, 10% opacity. We could just add some points, some highlights, some shimmer in the background. Maybe we go from 10 to 20. Just be a bit hesitant with this luminous pen. It's really quite strong. We can add some elements here as well. Just shimmers, lights that are coming in the background there a little bit. Could be quite nice. Adjustments, motion blur, and we could always blur that in to create a bit of movement. Perhaps we need to go in there with the airbrushing soft brush, set to the black still. Go down to 5% size, 10% opacity. Sharpen up this shadow a little bit. We don't want to lose that. And then again, back to the luminance light pen with the fourth color, same settings that we had a moment ago. Let's move along to the sixth color. Let me ramp up some of this glow. Back to the egg shape with this luminance pen around the very edge, even, or sorry, the light pen around the very edge. We can allow this glow to just creep in. We do have the alpha lock on so we're quite safe around this edge we don't need to worry about tidiness got this green it's not the white and just go around that edge and just really add some of that effect i feel like i just want to add a little bit more light coming in at this top edge so it explains some of the light on that side just a hint more 
Maybe we can have some of it down at the base here as well. Not too much though. I also want to change to the green, the fifth green, in with the soft brush still, down to 3% size, 10% opacity, maybe just less in fact. Let's go for the 3%. And just bring in some extra kind of surface textures in addition to what we've already got. Just creating a bit more of an atmosphere now at this point. Why not? And I think I'll switch to the, in fact, go for a new layer, change it from the normal to the add again, go for something like the next to the white with the luminance light pen. And I think I'll just 100% size and 40% opacity, just create some features, some sparkle in the environment perhaps, and not too much because then we can go to the adjustments motion blur and i'm just going to blur them in just a hint find the right balance so about 20 percent sideways i think works maybe a touch more of the green fourth in with the airbrushing soft brush 10 percent size five percent opacity and just a bit more of that green in the background i think there just to bring it all together a little bit more and down here as well one last tweak i'm going to slide and duplicate that whole layer go to the blend mode and i think just playing around with them, finding the balance that works best. I do think that using something like the Multiply Works, which is at the very top, makes it a bit darker, but we don't need to stick with the opacity of that. So without it or with it, we can find somewhere, maybe around the 50%, turn it on or off or on, and then we can find whatever works best for us. I'm gonna leave it about 50%. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along with this, you may also enjoy my Neon Cube in the forest that I posted very recently too. And otherwise, I hope to catch you back here again. Bye for now. See you soon.